Good afternoon, church family and friends, and thank you for joining us for this time of reflection and inspiration. Today's Upper Room Devotion, A Message from God, was written by Samar Arum of Punjab, Pakistan. Our scripture reference is taken from the book of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 21 through 43. Hear these words. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhages stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any longer? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Halatha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years old. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Hear now Samar's reflection. My husband had been ill for several days and we were worried he may have contracted the COVID-19 virus. We live with our parents and young children and the idea of spreading the virus to them troubled us. We had him tested for the virus and we found it challenging to wait patiently for the results. Each evening after dinner, my children, their caretaker, and I gather to read a passage from the children's Bible. That evening, when I opened the Bible to the story of the day, the title was Jesus Heals. I flipped back a page thinking I may have skipped ahead by mistake, but I had not. I was filled with a heartfelt gratitude because I knew God was speaking to me. I told my children's caretaker about how God speaks to us through scripture. We need only to approach with faith and with gratitude and God will guide us through our trials. That night, as I read the story of Jesus giving life to Jairus' sick daughter, I was assured that whatever test results my husband received, God would lead us through the tribulation. I was peaceful that night. Friends, Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 21 through 43, contains two powerful stories of heartfelt heartache, faith, and hope. 
Many of us have heard the story of the woman with the issue of blood, bleeding for 12 long years, having endured the ridicule of her community, having endured the hardship of physician after physician to no avail and still for 12 years continuing to bleed. She had heard about Jesus coming into the area, and so she presses through the crowd that had gathered around Jesus. As he's on his way to Jairus' home, she pushes through, believing that all I need to do is touch the hem of his garment, it's called a, a tallit. It's a prayer shawl. It goes over the shoulders, and it was worn by and still is worn by uh, most Jewish men and rabbis in particular. And so what she touched was just a fringe, a little garment tied at the end of that shawl. She says, if I can just touch his garment, I will be made whole. So she touches the garment and immediately feels that her disease has ended, that she has been made healed. The hemorrhaging has stopped. Jesus turns around and says, who touched me? And his disciples respond, as many of us would have responded, Jesus, don't you see the crowd around you? Everyone is touching you. What do you mean, who touched you? But they didn't understand that someone had touched Jesus, expecting him to do something for them that no one else could do. In the midst of that story and in the midst of that great gift of healing and the conversation that Jesus has with this woman about her healing, messengers come to Jairus and say to him, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble Jesus to come to the house. It's all over. And Jesus, overhearing this conversation, turns now and addresses Jairus, the one he's in process of going to see his daughter and says, all you need to do is to believe and have hope. Let's continue along the journey. They continue along the journey to Jairus' house. They come to Jairus' house, and there's this scene of wailing and, and weeping and mourning. We can imagine what it's like when we hear of a sudden passing and loss of someone who is near and dear to us. And Jesus says to them, why are you weeping and mourning? This girl is not dead. She is asleep. Hearing this, they laugh and they ridicule, saying, you, you, you just don't understand how this works because they were so gripped with grief that they didn't understand who was in their presence. And so Jesus kicks them all out the house, and he only allows Jairus and his wife and his disciples to go with him into the room where the girl was. And taking her by the hand, he says to her, get up. And Jairus' daughter gets up and begins walking around. Jairus and his wife are filled with amazement. His disciples are filled with amazement. And he says, don't tell anybody about what you just seen. It's not time yet because everybody will expect me to do the same thing. And what they have to understand is that there's an intangible component of what happens when you meet my supernatural power with your ability to have faith. Both the woman who had suffered with the issue of blood and Jairus had to believe in something they had never seen before, had to have faith and hold on to that hope that Jesus could do something that no one else could do. And so that's what we find in these two stories, that in the midst of the heartache and heartbreak of their life's conditions, that hope and faith that they held on to enabled them to see something that only Jesus could do. Samar's reflection reminds us of our need to hold on to hope, no matter what the circumstances are that are going on around us, to hold on to the belief that Jesus is able to walk with us through all of our life's obstacles and struggles, that God is working on our behalf to provide for us something that we could not see or manufacture ourselves, nor could anyone else manufacture. And yes, it seems improbable, and sometimes it seems like it's fanciful, but indeed what Christ asks us to do is to believe and his ability to do what no one else could do. And so both the woman who suffered with the issue of blood and Jairus were able to witness something that they had never seen before because they held on to that faith. And that, friends, are the lesson of these two stories, not the healing for self. It's the faith that they had that Jesus could do what no one else could do. That all the woman had to do was just touch the hem of his garment and she believed that that would be enough to change her life forever. That, that Jairus had to believe that, yes, this one who's done more than we could ever have seen before is, is, might be able to do something I've never heard or seen before. So I'm going to continue walking with them to my house. Although I received the negative report, although I received that negative diagnosis, although I'm going through a tumultuous situation in my life, I believe Jesus can do it. And that is the gift, that is that message of God, that no matter what the obstacle, no matter how deep the valley might be in our lives, God journeys with us and provides for us a way 
out of no way. And so this day, friends, we part with Samar's prayer. Dear God, guide our paths as we face everyday trials. Help us not to be anxious, but rather assured of your presence and protection. Amen.